evening class. Um, hopefully you were able to watch my uh, video lecture on the train law. Um, so there are many relevant uh, new and amended provisions uh, specifically regarding income taxation. So um, you have found out about the amendment on section 24A on the individual income tax rate for for compensation earner as well as for self-employed professionals. Now, as I said, we're going to divide income taxation into two, individuals and corporation. And uh, as you may have um, experienced from your readings that there is an overlap, okay? Overlap between individuals and corporation specifically for those um, items included in the income tax returns on the composition of a gross income, um, itemized deductions, as well as on exclusions. Because whether you are a corporation or an individual taxpayer, um, the uh, except for some differences in rates and differences, minor differences in treatments of the itemized deductions as well as gross income uh, items, they are the the treatment is quite similar. Okay, so what should be added? What should be deducted? What should be excluded? Okay, so um, first and foremost, we will start the discussion on income tax by defining the meaning of um, income as well as capital. Okay, so income means all wealth that flows into the taxpayer other than a mere return of capital. On the other hand, capital, these are resource of a person which can be used in producing goods and services. Okay, so um, simply, okay, uh, capital is a source of wealth and income is the increase in wealth, no? As a result of the use of these uh, resources, whether it be through equipments, uh, the use of equipments because equipments can be uh, capital, uh, the use of assets, or even the use of um, labor. No? Uh, in the uh, in the uh, in case of service oriented businesses, no? so anything that increases your wealth as a result of the use of the capital, you call that income. No? So in simple terms. Capital may be the tree, and uh, income may be the fruits of the tree. So, in our purpose, okay, not all increases in your wealth will be included in your income tax return or will be taxable. Okay, so in other words, taxable income or those income that are subject to taxation would only include pertinent amounts of gross income specified in the tax code, okay? Less deductions, if any, which is also authorized or specified by the tax code or other special law. So when the tax law does not consider the item as a gross income or does not consider such item as deductible, then you cannot add nor can you deduct, okay? So you cannot use them, those line items that are specifically excluded cannot be used or cannot be considered in the determination of your taxable income. So I hope that's clear. Now, to be considered as a taxable income, there must be three criteria no, that must be met. First, criteria is that there must be a gain or profit. So simply uh, speaking, uh, there is a gain when you sell something for more than its cost. So when there is an increase in your capital, there is wealth. Okay, The gain must be realized or received. So take note of the preposition or. So it is either for the gain to be considered taxable is it is either realized or received. So ibig sabihin ng class, not all income are cash-based. For 
maybe for businesses that are service oriented or those that follows the uh, cash basis accounting ang ang kino-consider mo na income or those receipt okay meaning merong cash inflow okay but in also in some instances uh, more particularly in merchandising manufacturing businesses they follow this accrual method of accounting when even if you have not yet received the money or you have not yet received payment for the goods or services you considered an item to be an income because you realize the same so when is the realization when will the realization take place no? so when there is a completed sales transaction okay so um, simply put when you are able to deliver the goods and in return you're able to receive or uh, an acknowledgement of the receipt of the goods and payment on a later date so you record it by in accounting we we call that as accounts receivable or notes receivable no? so these are collectible uh, receipts no there are usually terms whether it be short term or long term or installments but that the accrual method of uh, realizing a gain or profit uh, is determined upon the completion of the transaction. Okay, so not all gains uh, are received outright. No, so even th those gains that are to be received in the future, and there is a clarity or certainty as to its receipt, then it is also considered as a gain. No? So in other words, utang. Okay, na deliver mo ng goods, pero hindi ka pa nababayaran in a cruel method that already been realized. No? So, yung in cash basis naman, you know, as long as you receive the money, then you consider that as a gain. Uh, before receiving the amount, wala mo nang realization of, wala mo nang um, recognition pala of gain uh, in that transaction. Okay, so third, and um, most importantly is that the law or treaty does not exclude the gain from taxation. So there are specific laws or even treaty that excludes no, gain from, trans uh, from, from, from taxation. So we will later on have an itemized deduction on those um, exclusions. So there may be, uh, they may be um, considered as an increase in your wealth or there may be a cash inflow or realization of income however for tax purposes they are excluded because there is a specific law or treaty that says that they should be excluded okay. so i hope that's clear so you may have wondered no what are these income that may be you know considered as um, increases in wealth but specifically excluded no? they're not taxable um, for example um, you receive a compensation for injury no? or there is a um, case that you filed against uh, someone for uh, reckless injury a uh, reckless imprudence resulting to your um, uh, injury so the court will give you, uh, will award to you damages. No, strictly speaking, that's an increase in your wealth because that's an amount or consideration given to you. But the law specifically says that uh, compensation for sickness or injuries they are not taxable. Um, what else? Um, when you receive gifts, no, or donations from your parents or share in the uh, settlement of the estate of the deceased uh, relative you know, who happens to be and you happen to be an heir so that's another increase in your wealth okay because those are assets given to you but uh, according to you know the law they are not part of uh, your income you know, because they are there is another tax for them such as estate taxes or donors tax um how about naman those under a treaty? 
uh, for example, non-resident uh, citizens, uh, they may be um, taxable from all sources within the Philippines, but since they are non-resident citizens, they live abroad, there may be another tax applicable to them. So the country where they stay in the Philippines may have a bilateral treaty or some sometimes multinational treaty among countries on how to treat no, the tax credits or um, uh, tax reduction no, for, 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 for the applicable taxes to be paid um, in two countries. No? So that's how maybe it will not be taxable already in the Philippines because it's already taxed abroad or vice versa. Or maybe there is a reduction no, in the payment of tax through tax credit certificate. So those are just a sample of, of when uh, of the of number three when the law or treaty does not exclude the gain from taxation. Okay, what are the classifications of income? So um, we have uh, somehow discussed this in our updates for the train law. Uh, compensation income, you know that this is uh, from uh, income from employment and usually they are subject to normal tax, section 24A. Now, just to be clear, class, when I talk about subject to normal tax and subject to final tax, the the, the usual um, difference in that is yung subjects to normal tax, they are included in your income tax returns, no? especially for resident citizens. Yung subject naman sa final tax, they are usually uh, passive income that are not included as an item, as a line item in your income tax return. Okay. Business income, so again, those derived from exercise of profession or business or trade. Okay. And these are also usually subject to normal tax. Um, passive income the taxpayer merely waits for the amount to come in. So these are usually investments, okay? And usually, they are subject to final tax. Uh, capital gains as well, these are income derived from the sale of assets that are not used in trade or business. And usually, they are subject to capital gains taxes. Um, you may be so used, no, upon your readings in of, of income taxation. And that's why... I would like to emphasize it as early as now because uh, you may be so used to hearing that all passive income or all capital gains are subject to final tax. Take note, class, that uh, later on when we differentiate the classes of individuals, there are passive income and capital gains that are subject to normal tax, meaning they are included in your income tax return. Okay. And more importantly, class, uh, depending on the nature of the business of the taxpayer, an item may be considered as a passive income uh, for a specific taxpayer. However, it may be considered as an ordinary income for a certain taxpayer. So very good example, real estate uh, firm no? or those that are uh, in the business of buying and selling house and lot, okay? Um, if they're the one selling this house and lot, yung, those house and lot are considered ordinary assets to them because it's part of their inventory. It's part of their uh, goods subject for sale on the ordinary conduct of business. However, if you are not, a real estate agent or you're not engaged in this kind of business and you happen to own a house and lot as an investment or maybe as your family home or maybe as your second home uh, and when you sell this particular house and lot then that's the time when it becomes subject to the six percent capital gains tax because it is a capital asset okay so you have to consider not only, kasi minsan, oh, sinabing house and lot, the direction na yan, yung utak mo, iisipin capital asset. No, you have to determine um, the kind of taxpayer na nasa, nasa, ano, nasa, nasa tax. Okay, so 
uh, similar for passive income, di ba? Examples of passive income are interest income on investments, okay? Dividend income, uh, uh, royalties, okay? So, for banks, interest income is part of their ordinary income. So, it's subject to uh, the normal income tax rate. It's part of their ITR or income tax return. But for me or for you who have deposits in bank or who have some some types of holdings in certain entities, these are passive income because they are, you know, we hold, we do not rely on them for sustenance. So we have our own job and on the side, we have investments that are, you know, money working for us. So these are passive income. Similarly, um, considered in as a capital asset, yung mga stocks, uh, traded or not traded in the stock exchange. No? So, these are capital assets subject to capital gains taxes. That's the usual norm. But for those stock brokers or holding firms that uh, caters to this uh, kind of transaction on a daily basis, no, it's their main business, then all of the gains um, in the conduct of their stock trading are considered ordinary assets. So also considered as ordinary gains. That's why it's part of their income tax return. So the first thing that you have to um, be mindful of is the kind of tax pay you're being asked. No? For example, in cases or in when you're uh, faced with a certain um, bar problem or in, in a certain exam. So yun yung um, titignan nyo. Sino ba yung taxpayer? What kind of taxpayer is this? Is this an individual? Is this a corporation? If it's an inv individual, is it a resident citizen or a non-resident uh, citizen, whatsoever, whatsoever? And what kind of business are they engaged to? Okay, so I hope I am able to clarify that uh, misconception as early as now. Ha? Huh? Not all interests are passive income, or not all uh, sell of house and lots are called capital gains. Okay. Um, ano naman yung mga different kinds of income tax system? Okay, so uh, ma appreciate nyo to when you you know read the entire income tax and then. When you go back to this, you will fully appreciate this. No? So it's good if you watch my lecture after reading the book. By them, you'll have a, a, a holistic idea. Okay. Global income tax system is um, a combination of gross compensation income and or income from business. Okay. To arrive at a total or global income tax subject to tabular rates. No? So similar incomes uh, earned by a certain taxpayer is subjected to a single tax rate no? or a progressive graduated rate. So just the same, uh, resident citizens, they are taxable for whatever, for wherever they earn this income. So, so later on, we will... Mam, sabi ka ng sabi ng resident citizen, sino ba yan? Okay? So, we will find it out, uh, ev everything we will find out as we go along. Gross income tax system naman, um, the taxpayer's income is computed based on the gross income. So, no um, consideration as to the allowable deductions. Scheduler tax systems, um, since the income tax are either computed based on the two previous systems, their filing and payment should be accompanied with separate BIR form as required. So, scheduler tax system, the, the income is taxed based on the nature. No? So, different nature, uh, nature of income are taxed differently. Okay? Collection points of income. Okay, so... Um, creditable withholding tax, these are income tax withheld by the employer 
before the earner receives the net proceeds of his income. Okay, so pag na-receive ng employee yung income niya, may net of tax na yun. No? So that's withholding tax. The uh, employer withhelds the tax for the employee. And it is creditable because at the end of the season or at the end of the taxable period, when you file the income tax return for the employee, these are creditable. No? So if he had previous payments from previous quarters, they are to be deducted from the annual um, tax return to determine how much is left to be paid, okay? Final withholding tax naman, um, these are withheld at source, okay? So, the tax is called final because it is not allowed to be deducted from the actual income tax at the end of the year because they have a actually these are income that are totally disregarded in your ITR because they have a whole lot of uh, tax treatment okay quarterly income tax so those who paid uh, who who in, who are engaged in business will pay their income tax on a quarterly basis but at, at the end of the year they'll have to prepare an annual income tax return so all of those quarterly payment of taxes are to be deducted from the annual. So, and of course, the annual income tax. Okay, tests on the taxability of income. So there are several tests to determine whether an income is taxable or not. So you have the flow of wealth test. So these are all theoretical um what you call this theoretical concepts, no, because these I included this because um, it's one of those listed in your syllabus for the bar exam. So, malay nyo, di ba? Itanong. So, flow of wealth test is the determining factor for the imposition of income tax is whether any gain was derived from the transaction. Okay? Realization test. So, unless the income is deemed realized, there is no taxable income. Economic benefit principle test, the flow of wealth realized is taxable only to the extent that the taxpayer is economically benefited, okay? Uh, criteria in imposing uh, income tax, okay? So citizenship principle, a citizen of the Philippines is subject to Philippine tax on his worldwide, uh, worldwide income if he resides in the Philippines or only on his income from sources in the Philippines if he qualifies as a non-resident citizen. Okay, so under the citizenship uh, principle, by the way, the Constitution um, defines who are citizens of the Philippines. So the question there is, are you a Filipino? So whether natural born or naturalized Filipino, as long as... Uh, you are a Pinoy or a Filipino citizen, then you qualify under this principle. So, um, if you reside in the Philippines, you work for most of the year here in the Philippines, you are considered as a resident citizen. Thus, you will be taxed on all of your income wherever situated. So, sinabi worldwide income. In fact, of all the um, classification of individual taxpayers we will discuss later on, only resident citizens are um, uh, are taxable for all his, uh, his income from wherever uh, source, okay? Letter B, if you qualify as a non-resident citizen, ibig sabihin, you are a Filipino, but you don't work here in the Philippines for most of the year at least, no? Or you are an immigrant, uh, you, you, or you are an OFW, a seaman, no? Where you earn your income outside of the Philippines, okay? Then you are a citizen, but you are a non-resident. So non-resident citizen, you will only be taxed on your income from sources within the Philippines. So that's how uh, you will apply the citizenship principle. Ito namang residence principle. This is with respect to resident alien. Uh, so again, ha, 
a, a resident alien is someone who resides in the Philippines for most of the year, okay? Uh, actually, ang qualification yan to be a resident alien is at least you have stayed in the Philippines for one year. No? You are an alien because you're not a Filipino. So, yung mga uh, foreigners na nakapangasawa ng mga Pinoy or Pinay who have successfully applied before the Bureau of Immigration that they be uh, considered a resident alien and stay here for, you know, consider this as the resident in the Philippines because they qualified as such, okay? For purposes of taxation, only income from sources or earned within the Philippines are taxable to the resident alien. So, for example, if you are, you are a retired, usually, di ba, yung mga kano, um, because my husband works in the immigration, so I would uh, observe talaga, and our law office also ano, caters to yung mga, ano, um, yung mga usual na documentary requirements needed for application before uh, the immigration offices, no? kung may gusto magpa-resident alien. Uh, so, kailangan, number one, may asawa kang pinay. So, yung pinay na asawa mo, siya yung uh, mag apply sa sa'yo. Um, but of course, you cannot have or own properties in the Philippines. So, it must be, it's still it's uh, exclusive to Filipinos. So, Anyways, um, if you are a retired, uh, for example, U.S. Army, you decided to live here in the Philippines and marry a Filipina. So, um, if you have investments abroad or in the U.S., that will not be part of your taxable income. Okay. So, only, like for example, if you engage in business here in the Philippines, allowed naman yon as long as it's not in the retail industry. So, only those income from within will be taxable for resident alien. Source principle. An alien is subject to Philippine income tax because he derives income from sources within the Philippines. Thus, a non-resident alien is liable to pay Philippine income tax on his income from sources within the Philippines such as dividend, interest, rent, royalty, despite the fact that he has not set foot in the Philippines. So, um, so alien ka na nga, hindi ka pa resident or non-resident alien. So, most of the time, you are away or even the entire period, entire taxable period, you are uh, not physically present in the country. But if you have investment in the country, then you will be taxed under the source principle. So again, even a non-resident alien will be taxed for his income earned from inside the Philippines or sources within the Philippines. So I hope those clear. And with those principles class, we can now classify um, taxpayers or individual taxpayers into four. So you have the resident citizen, okay, resident and citizen. You have non-resident citizen. Uh, you have resident alien, okay, and then non-resident alien. So, claro yung resident citizen, ha? Uh, for purposes of uh, taxation, residency class, because, you know, especially nowadays, um, pre-COVID, we all we travel all the time, um, may mga um, international speakers or mga may mga um, businessmen na they have many 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 businesses in the Philippines as well as abroad so um, hindi mo na alam po ano ba yan resident citizen ba yan o non resident citizen yan so the tax code made it easier for you um, if he has met mixed income from sources within and outside you determine his stay within the Philippines. If he stays in the Philippines for more than 180 days, that's six months, no? half of the year he is in the Philippines, then he is considered as a resident citizen. But if he stays abroad for most of the 
here, then is a non-resident citizen. Okay? A non-resident citizen class is classified usually into two. They are immigrants. So immigrants, they are Filipinos who decided to reside permanently abroad. Okay? Um, it also includes uh, employees of foreign entity on a permanent basis. So they are considered a non-resident citizen from the time they depart from the Philippines because the, int the intention there is at least for the rest of the year, they will not go back anymore because the intention is to permanently reside in uh, abroad, okay? On the other hand, overseas contract workers may also be considered as a non-resident citizen. Um, a seaman is considered an OCW provided that he is a member of a vessel engaged exclusively in international trade. Okay. Um, to be considered an OCW, you must be physically present abroad most of the time during the calendar year. So, of course, uh, OFWs usually may contract cancel at New Year's. Okay? So, if, if, if they don't, um, if they haven't, like, for example, 2021, they left the Philippines September. So, for 2021, since they are in the Philippines for most of the year, they will be considered as a resident citizen. Okay. Uh, resident alien. Okay, so take note class as to resident or non-resident citizen, the period is 180 days. But for a resident alien, it is required that he has stayed in the Philippines for more than one year. Okay. Now, lastly, a non-resident alien. So Indonesia residents the Philippines less than 180 days of stay or less than a year and then he is also not a Filipino so alien they are classified further into two so there are non-resident alien that are engaged in trade or business is it possible yes of course as have ko kanina uh, um, a, a, a certain person may have a an established business here in the Philippines, even if most of the time or the entire year, he has never set foot in the Philippines. So he is still considered engaged in trader business, okay? Not engaged in trader business, so walang business income derived in the Philippines. So usually, uh, for example, um, a specialist, okay, who will have a, like a special project or uh, what you joint venture in the Philippines for like two months or three months long. So they are non-resident alien, not engaged. Okay. I hope that's clear. So uh, just to reiterate, only resident citizens are taxable for income derived from sources within and without. Or without means outside the Philippines. All other individual income taxpayers are taxable only for income derived from sources within. So the rest of the taxpayers, such as residents, um, non-resident citizens, yung mga OFW, uh, resident aliens who have stayed more than one year in the Philippines, and non-resident aliens, whether engaged or not engaged in trader business, are taxable only for their income from sources with it. So, if you file your income tax return, this is how it will look like. Okay, so entire income, less those income that are excluded by the law or that are subject to final tax. So you'll have your gross income and then less deductions. And then you have your net taxable income. Multiply the rates under Section 24A. You have your net income tax due and then less further any tax credit. No? So you may have, uh, although we will not really dwell on the computation side because I'm trying to, I'm trying really my best to simplify the topic as it is. Um, so tax credit class, no, for accounting purposes naman ito, if you have paid um, a tax abroad, so there is a certain formula. So 
So, ma-reduce yung tax payment mo on a proportionate basis. Or a tax credit could also mean um, those taxes previously paid from previous quarters, okay? Or those excessive tax payments, okay? Or when you have tax credit certificates from uh, previous periods, okay? So, uh, it depends. So, those are a little bit too deep, no? So, sa ngayon, ito yung inyong net income tax formula. So, don't be ano, um, intimidated with taxation. I know it can be intimidating because it's very technical and all. But um, you can learn it uh, slowly as long as you try to... Um, I don't know how you learn, ha? but for me, I learn through application. I imagine real-life situation. I research on how it is applied like this or if there's an article related to it. So, I read on it further para naman nagkakaroon ng ano um kumbaga unod no may may ano may laman yung concept so i know i i i, I understand how uh, it is applied so very very kung ano binasa niyo yung trade law or yung NIRC code it can be really intimidating because ang daming rates ang daming provided further and etc because there are exemptions so um, you know, you can learn it in a manner that's simplified. And uh, if you learn the basics for now, because it's the, it's your first time, then that's enough. Okay? You can learn it further as you go along. So by reading, by listening to sources on YouTube or on your recordings or by researching, by reading cases. So you enrich yourself by reading some more. Eh, kami ng mga professors, we also have to read some more because, uh, there, you know, when you try to learn something, there's always something new to learn everything. So even experts, uh, you know, hindi din sila 100% accurate or, you know, there's still something more to be learned. So, um, it's it's normal to be intimidated somehow because I've I've been teaching taxation for in accountancy ha for siguro roughly seven years before this. Um, so I kind of know the feeling of the student na mam ano ano ba to masyadong technical and all. But you know you you will get there. No? You will get there. Okay, gross income. So. I hope no, um, claro yun class, um, only resident citizens are taxable for their uh, income all over. Um, these are gross income class included, uh, to be included in the computation of your income tax return um, under Section 24A or in other words, no, subject to normal tax. So, Compensation, of course, now you know that gross income from profession, gains from dealings in property. So, kanina, there are gains from dealings in property that are subject to capital gains tax. There are also that are subject to normal tax, okay? Interests, okay? So, also the same. Rents, royalties, dividends, annuities, prizes and meanings, pensions and partner share in the distributive income of general professional partnership so these are the only uh items of income that are subject to normal income tax so itong mga itemized na to class um there are exceptions to that so uh for example interest not all interests are subject to gross income or subject to normal tax no? so that's why you will have to distinguish Now, in addition to that class, I may forget no, income from whatever source. So, even income from illegal sources, they are also taxable, strictly speaking. Na. So, embezzled funds, once discovered, they are also taxable. Kung ano, nangidnab ka ng bata, may ransom, that's also strictly taxable. Or proceed from sales of illegal drugs, that's also taxable. Na. So, because the losses from whatever source. So these are also, you know, theoretical 
for theoretical purposes. And of course, if, if you happen to uh, be caught with, you know, doing criminal acts, the BIR has the authority to impose taxes on these kinds of income. Okay. Now, further class, um, to give you uh, itemized definition on, uh, to give an idea on what these kinds of income are. So, these are the definitions. So, business income, you know, compensation income, you know, gains from these uh, in property uh, when there is a sale and or exchange of assets, okay? personal assets, real assets, okay, interest earnings derived from deposit or lending of money, goods, or credit. So, yung mga uso-uso ngayon, mga lending institutions, ayan, um, those are earning interest uh, income as part of their gross income subject to normal tax. Rent, so, from leasing of real estate as well as uh, personal property. So you know how it goes. Uh, royalties, um, payment or portion of proceeds paid to the owner of a right. So if you're a recording label, you, you have all of these uh, royalties for the composition of your music, okay? Uh, or if you're uh, publishing with several authorships under its wing, so royalties paid, it's also considered as a normal uh, income tax item, okay? Part of your gross income. Dividends, okay? So if you're a holding company, you know, you invest in several other corporations, so the company would receive dividends from all of these um, investments. That's also part of your uh, ordinary assets, okay? So... Annuities, uh, sometimes there are people who buy annuities for their insurance. For example, you bought an annuity for 500000 and that you expect to, over the five years, you expect to have a return of around 700000 So the first 500000 is, of course, not taxable, but the 200000 or the excess no, of the premium will be considered part of your gross income. Prices and winning, so there are also prices and winnings that are subject to normal income tax. Okay, a prize is a reward for a contest or competition. Uh, winning is a reward for an event that depends by chance. Lotto or PCSO winnings, uh, these are naman excluded from income tax. There is a law, uh, the tax law excludes them. Okay, so we will discuss further on that uh, later on the exclusions. Pensions, no, when you retire, okay, um, may mga pensions uh, kang nare-receive upon your retirement, okay, in consideration for past uh, services. So, there are pensions that are included in the uh, computation of your gross income. There are also pensions that are excluded. So, GSIS pensions, even some private pensions that are BIR approved, so they are excluded. They are not taxable because there's a law or the tax law specifically excludes them. But if, for example, the uh, pension is not BIR approved, then it will be taxable. I say that's still considered as some sort of compensation, okay? Partners distributive share from the net income of a GPP. What is a GPP, you know? So when we tackle on corporation, I will include trusts and partnerships as part of the discussion. But for now, a GPP or a general professional partnership is a partnership for the exercise of profession. And the entity by itself, the partnership by itself is tax exempt. However, your share in the net income of that GPP will be taxable as part of your gross income. So, for example, na lang ha, ako, I, um, I have a law firm, okay? Um, our law firm is tax exempt, okay? Pero, uh, we also have our accounting. So, 
uh, lahat ng mga professional rent services rendered, that's part of our income, right? Lahat ng mga office expenses and all our reimbursements, travel expenses, etc., those are deductions from our professional fees. So, professional fees minus those allowable deductions, you have your net income. So, since we are there are two of us in the law firm, we divide our earnings by two. So, yung share ko doon, I will have to report that in my own income tax return subject to normal tax. So, my share in the GPP plus, for example, I have um, uh, several businesses uh, that's also included. No? So, included in my income tax return. So, I have business income and then uh, I also have my share in the distributive share in the net income of the GPP. Our law firm is not taxable, but my share in the net income is taxable. And then, for example, I also um, uh, retained by some companies, so I receive compensation for that. So, that's also part of my income as compensation income. So, I have all of these sources. I combine them into one income tax return. Okay? So, Kanina sinabi ko, these are the types of gross income and these are subject to normal tax. And there are similar items in your items of gross income that are excluded. No? Excluded from normal tax but they are also taxable in a different manner. So that's how I arrange it. Because uh, para alam nyo na lahat yung mga items of gross income are they, when are they subject to normal tax? When are they considered as capital asset as excluded from normal tax? And uh, in what manner are they taxable? So, for example, compensation income. So, this, they, these are the instances when they are taxable. Okay, if they are not taxable um, under normal income tax, they are taxed 25% GIT or 15% final tax for uh, MNC. So, ano ba itong mga MNC? Later on, we'll discuss more on that. But anyways, as a general rule class, um, if you have a property such as this gains from dealings in property, interest, no? Uh, if they are considered as an ordinary asset or part of your inventory, then they are subject to uh, normal tax. Okay. Um, for resident citizens class, okay, so this is a very important rule. Ha? This is also a very important rule. All sources received outside the Philippines will be subject to normal tax. So, Strictly speaking, if a resident citizen, no, who, like for example, ako, I'm a resident citizen, but I have investment from abroad. You know? um, I have a, I sold a house in the U.S. that's under my name. So that's a gain in the dealings and property. That's, uh, that, that gain that I realized is technically a capital asset gain, right? But since it is outside the Philippines, the BIR cannot tax that. Philippine jurisdiction cannot tax that. that. Thus, I have to include it in my income tax return. However, in the same year, if I also have a capital asset, like for example, here in Savior Estate, I have, aside from my family home, I have a house and lot that I invested in considered as a capital asset and I decided to sell it and I earn some income that will not be included in my income tax return. Instead, it will be subject to a final tax of 6% on the higher between the fair market value as per assessor's office or the uh, fair market value per BIR zonal valuation. Okay. Okay, so I hope that's uh, clear. For another kind of um, property, dealings in property, is ito mga stocks, okay? So, may panibagong rates tayo, itong 6 of 
10 of 1% for those stocks traded in the stock exchange. So I am an enthusiast. So I'd like, I have been trading in the stock exchange for four years now. So I've been learning the ropes. And um, I am enrolled in the BT, BTI trade. So, makikita ko naman doon, every time I make a trade, aside from the commission that I pay the broker, I have, if there's a gain for my transaction, if, well, I buy a stock and then pag, ano, after holding it for a while, I decided to sell it, I gain something out of it, then I am taxed for that complete cycle of buy and sell no, for, for my gain. So, it's taxable on me uh final tax six uh, over ten over one percent because it's uh, considered as a capital asset because I'm not I don't trade for a living but however if uh, I trade for a living and or if I'm a broker or if I'm an investment firm then the pool of income that we realize from all of this uh, stock transaction trading in the stock exchange that's part of our ordinary asset the subject of normal tax. So, all of this, uh, with respect to the rates class, uh, um, I don't think naman that the, uh, no, the examiner, if ever, or the teacher, like I myself, when we have our assessment test, I would not naman make it compute, no? Because um, sa atin dito, yung legal implications niya, at saka yung mga legal provision. So, it's enough that you are familiar on the treatment. Okay. If, if you want to go further, like uh, when you go to practice, maybe you will be uh, I don't know, um, experience all of these transactions. So, yeah, well, you can I know, familiarize yourself with the rates. But for our purpose, it's enough that you are aware on the treatment. Okay. Now, I would just like to highlight. Uh, so, yung so, sa annuities, ano, oh dividends, dividends. Um, so, again, ha, itong mga interest, gains, uh, rents, royalties, if derived from sources outside the Philippines, then it is subject to normal tax. Um, annuities, yung sabi ko kanina, if you buy an annuity and that uh, you have outlived the annuity, and you are still receiving in excess of your premium payment, then that would represent interest and the subject to tax. But if it's representing premium lang or return of premium, that it's not subject to tax, okay? Because there is um, there is no wealth or uh, increase in wealth per se, or even there is no gain. It's just mere a return uh, of capital. Prices naman class and winnings, um, prices not exceeding 10,000 is actually subject to normal tax. But if the price uh, exceeds 10,000, then it's subject to a uh, final tax of 20%. Winnings, um, if uh, it is a PCSO or lotto winnings, okay, the, the law specifically excludes it. It is exempted from income tax. Now, dito sa ano class, partners distributive share from the net income of a GPP. So, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, a GPP is not taxable as an entity, but each partner share is taxable. But, if it is a business partnership, then we are talking differently because it is subject to 20% final tax. So you have to differentiate a business partnership from a GPP. Okay? Now, you know your gross income. So what are to be included in your gross income? So now you go to your itemized deduction. So what are to be deducted from your gross income? This is with respect to those um, taxpayers engaged in trade or business. Okay, so if you're engaged in trade or business, the law allows you to uh, have some certain uh, allowed deductions or expenses. But the most important thing that you have 
to um, account for is um, the substantiation. So, straight to dyan ang, ano, class, ang NIRC as well as in the BIR. I have, you know, actual cases, um, um, tax cases, no? Kalap, you know, um, contesting assessments from BIR. Doon talaga yung, ano, doon talaga nagkakasalo sa substantiation, the providing of official receipts. Not all receipts are allowed to be uh, accepted no as as a proof of deduction so kailangan iniipon talaga class no and yung hindi ka talaga ng OR or sales invoice so it's it's um there is a strict requirement on that so sayang naman de ba like for example yung expenses mo rental for the entire year umabot ng let's say five hundred thousand tapos ang nare-receive mo lang from the landlord acknowledgement receipt. So, hindi yan allowable. Kailangan talaga OR, BIR approved, at merong nakalagay na VAT registered. If VAT registered yung uh, uh, if yung owner ng unit. Okay? Now, general business expenses, um, these are ordinary expenses paid or incurred during the taxable year in carrying uh, on your business. No? So it's directly attributable to the conduct of your business. Um, ano ba? Uh, just, just an example class. Uh, um, we own a laundry shop. No? It's Pindash Laundromat located here at uh, so nag-promote ako. <laughs> located here at Uptown Condotel. I know, uh, Uptown area in Tagayandi, Oro City and the ground floor of Primavera Residences. So, we cater to the hotel because Primavera Residences is a semi-hotel, semi-residential uh, area. So, um, ayun. Um, what are, as a laundry shop owner, what are our general business expense? So, uh, of course, salaries ng employees, rentals, um expenses for gas so apology for that class I know. Um, my son woke up so i had to attend to him so anyway um continuing on um uh, another itemized deduction or interest so interest expenses for those money incurred uh, in connection with indebtedness that are used in the business. Okay, so these are deductible with limitations. Actually, class, as to the amount of limitations or to certain rates with respect to the net income, um, I will not include that in the discussion. As I said, we are not concerned with the computation uh, aspect. Taxes, uh, th there are taxes actually, class, that are allowed as deduction. These are paid or incurred in connection with your business. But uh, the tax law specifically, as you may have seen in your, read in your book, that the tax laws specifically itemized also those um, taxes that are not deductible. So, for example, income taxes, value-added taxes, other NIRC taxes are not uh, deductible taxes. But, for example, um, uh, excise taxes or consumption taxes that are related to the production cost are uh, actually uh, allowed as uh, part of your itemized deduction. Losses, okay, so these are calamity losses or cash flow losses, uh, unintended destruction or deprivation of things that are uh, not in the ordinary course of business. So, these are, again, uh, subject to certain limitations. Bad debts, um, claims that becomes worthless or uncollectible arising from money lent or from goods sold or services rendered. So, again, um, when you use the accrual method of accounting, you usually sell goods for credit. So, utang, pa-utang, and then there are those um, clients that are don't 
that don't pay, no? So when these um, receivables are written off, actually written off in your books, they are considered bad debt. So when they're written off, they are part of your itemized deduction. That's why class, if there are unexpected collection of your previously written of bad debts, they are added back as part of your gross income, okay? Depreciation, not especially for long-term assets, or um, um, these are big outlaid equipment um, that can be used uh, for more than one year. So you are also allowed as a deduction depreciation expense for reasonable allowances uh, to reduce the useful value of the tangible fixed asset resulting from wear and tear, normal obsolescence, and these um, assets are usually used in business. So you provide a yearly or annually depreciation for this fixed asset. So under the tax code, you're only allowed, I think, um, to use the straight line method of account of depreciation. So you simply divide the... Um, amount of the property by um, the useful life. So you will provide a uniform depreciation expense for the entire life of the property. And then there are also and then there are also depreciation that, uh, that there are assets that are depreciation, uh, depreciated based on double declining balances or the de declining balance method. So um, these are methods of reducing uh, the um, value of the property based on their wear and tear. Okay, so in, instead of a one-time deduction, you're allowed to spread out your uh, depreciation for the capital outlay. Okay, depletion of oils and and gas wells and mines. No? So exhaustion of natu natural resources like mines, oil and gas, wells due to production. So uh, just like depreciation, these are also periodic um, deduction or depletion of those natural resources. Okay. Um, of course, you cannot exercise mining or oil exploration without having to have certain rights over the property. Okay, so that's why depletion is an unallowed expense. Charitable and other contributions. So aside from the general business expenses, actually when you make a uh, contribution to a certain NGOs or even to the government, you know, the purpose is for charity. Although this is a non-operating expense, the law, the tax law allows them as a deduction. So of course, this is um, this has a certain limitation. So for example, if you make a contribution in favor of the government or those uh, government uh, agencies or political subdivis subdivisions that are intended for those priority projects such as in health, um, culture, I think sports, youth development, social economic developments. So these are priority projects of the government that will uh, allow you to deduct the contributions in full. Okay. However, if there you also make contribution, charitable contributions to non-government entities or NGOs, that uh, also are civic in nature, you are allowed um, a deduction for your contribution, but with limitations. I think for corporation, you, you are allowed up to 5% of your net income before contribution. And for individuals, you're allowed 10% of your net income uh, before contribution. Research and development or R&D costs no? as we go along. Um, the taxpayer has the option to consider it either as an ordinary and a necessary expense or a deferred expense charged to a uh, capital account. So, pwede na siyang capitalized as part of your, um, of your um, capital outlay. 
So later on, you can depreciate that. It, it can be part of the cost of depreciation. Or you can uh, no, uh, outrightly consider uh, R&D expense as an ordinary and necessary expense deductible. Okay. Pension trust. No? So if the amount intended uh, to provide retirement benefits to the employee, so if the employer pays for the pension of his employees, this is also deductible as part of the ITMS deduction at a certain ex uh, extent. Now, there, this OSD or optional standard deduction is relatively new. Um, for individual taxpayers, you are allowed a fixed percentage deduction of 40% of gross sales or receipts. So I said for individual, ha, because later on when we go to corporation, you are also allowed 40%, but the tax base is gross income. You know? So gross income is... Um, sales minus cost of sales or direct costs, okay? So that's the difference. But it, with gross sales, there is no deduction yet. So this is particularly helpful class for those um, entities that cannot track record of their actual expenditures or um, their itemized deductions are not supported by uh, receipts or um, substantiation, okay? So this is optional. So again, you can opt to itemize or in lieu of the itemize, you can have this optional standard deduction. And as discussed in the train law, um, you can altogether disregard the itemized and this 40% OSD by applying your 8% fixed uh, tax on gross sales, okay, or receipts. So that's another option for you. Now, um, also included in your income tax returns, uh, if we're on your income tax on individuals rather, is this fringe benefits tax. It's a special kind of final tax, okay? Um, effective January 1, 2018 and onwards, a final tax of 35% is hereby imposed on the grossed up monetary value of French benefits furnished or granted to the employee, except rank and file employees, no, by the employer. Okay, so um, what are fringe benefits in the first place? So let us go forward first with um, the definition of fringe benefits because I know this can be confusing. No? Mam, ang daming bagong terms. Ano ba yung monetary value, gross up monetary value? Okay, so a fringe benefit, any good service or other benefit furnished or granted by the employer, so in cash or in kind, in addition to the basic salaries of an individual employee, except rank and file employees, okay? So there are um, a whole list of fringe benefits provided by the employer in favor of his employee. So um, again, ha, this will not include rank and file employees. So uh, presumably managerial, supervisory employees have this fringe benefit. So if the employer will provide a housing for the employee, for the um, high level employee, or when he provides groceries or expense account, no groceries for the employee, for the high-level employee, or when he uh, buys a vehicle for the uh, employee, or when he pro when the employer provides uh, maids or drivers and others, when he would give the employee um, preferences on interest on loans, membership fees. So there are several. Uh, manner in which a fringe benefit may be earned. So uh, these are perks, no? So in layman's term, these are perks enjoyed by managerial employees or supervisory employees on top of their uh, basic salaries. Okay, so binigyan ka ng pabahay o pinatira ka sa bahay, those are fringe benefits, no? Additional benefits or binayaran yung ano pag-aaral ng mga anak mo educational assistance 
O di kaya binigyan ka ng uh, membership fees or premiums on um, exclusive golf clubs or when your employer pays for the uh, household expenses or for the salaries of your maids or drivers. So these are um, on top of your basic salaries. You are given all of this amenities or privileges and you are a managerial employee such fringe benefit is subject to a fringe benefit tax so there are two components so just to simplify it class yung benefit that you receive you know, so for example um you are given a uh, hundred thousand for the payment of your groceries um on a monthly basis so uh, so, para simple, let's say 65,000, okay? So, the 65,000 is the monetary value, okay? You gross it up uh, to include the would-be tax, no? To be, again, shouldered by the employer. So, the 65,000 divided by the 65%, uh, um, what they call this, uh, rate to get the gross of monetary value. So the gross of monetary value is the um, expense account of the employer. So these are allowable deduction of the employer. On the contrary, the 65,000, okay, the, I mean the 100,000 gross of monetary value constitute two things. This is the expense account shouldered by the employee, uh, employer amounting to 65,000. And 35,000 of which, or 35%, uh, constitute your fringe benefit tax. So these are withholding taxes no, or presumed withheld taxes subject to final tax to the employer. So again, ha, to be uh, classified or to be considered as a fringe benefit tax, it must be given or granted to the, uh, a managerial or supervisory employee. Okay, um, it must be listed as one of these itemized as, as shown in your screen and it must be for the sole benefit of the employee. Uh, kasi class, there are like, for example, housing that are provided by the employer uh, para lang mas malapit ka doon sa place of work. So that's for accessibility, for the benefit of the employer. That's not fringe benefit. Okay, but if the housing is quite excessive, no lavish and such. Th those are fringe benefit, and it is solely intended for the benefit of the employee for his, you know, convenience and for for him to experience um luxurious setting. Siguro para mag mas maganda magisip for the company. So those are fringe benefit. Um, so dalawang components yun class. So that's why it's grossed up. So the actual monetary value is grossed up by the complementary rate of 65%. So you get the 100% of that and then you multiply it by 35% fringe benefit tax. So you get the FBT and the FB. So the gross up monetary value 100% again is a deductible, fully deductible to the employer. Aside from that, he has to pay for the FBT or the tax component of 35 and also, of course, the 65000 he gives to the employer, employee, I mean. Now, what if the one who received is a rank-and-file employee? So, this is not uh, subject to fringe benefit tax. However, the fringe benefit is deductible expense of the employer, and correspondingly, it is also a part of the compensation of the rank-and-file employee subject to normal income tax. So, I hope... That's uh, that's clear. So this is the explanation on how to gross up the uh, fringe benefit. So it represents the actual monetary value and the tax component. That's why it's grossed up. The 100% grossed up divisor. Okay. So just to reiterate, if the fringe benefits are given to rank and file employees, they are treated as part of his income tax uh, on his compensation income rather subject to normal income tax. So the employer is allowed to deduct the fringe benefit amount 
to the rank and file employee and the gross of monetary value if the fringe benefit is given to managerial and supervisory employee and there are two components of the GMV. They are the actual monetary value and the fringe benefit tax. Okay. Now, lastly, class, we go to the special classes of individual uh, taxpayers or employees. Okay, so there is a special treatment as well for Filipinos or alien or Filipino counterparts employed by this multinational company. So if you are an alien or a Filipino counterpart employed by regional or area headquarters and regional operating headquarters of multinational corporations in the Philippines, meron kayong preferential tax rates of 15%. Employees as well of offshore banking units established in the Philippines, there is also... So take note how we're talking about the individual employees, not the entities themselves. Because these multinational companies who have headquarters in the Philippines or these offshore banking units are actually considered as corporation, a foreign corporations when we go to um, corporate taxpayers. And then foreign service contractor or subcontractor engaged in the petroleum operations in the Philippines, those are also subject to special kind of tax. Tax rate is 15%. So, ano ba itong mga RAH or ROH, no? Multinational company. So, there are several um, branches of um, international companies occupying uh, operations in the Philippines. So, for example, DHL, no? So, meron silang branches here in the Philippines. Uh, Manulife, no? It's a, it's a, it's uh, a multinational company operating around the Asia Pacific and some all around the world in that sense. So um, if they have supervisory um, headquarters in the country who, who does not operate or who does not earn income in the Philippines, their operation is limited to supervision, maybe some advertising, administrative purpose, then they are called regional area headquarters. Pero if they earn income, the branch or affiliates earn income in the Philippines, they are called regional operating headquarters. Just the same whether area or operating, the employees they're at are given preferential tax rate. No, this is by virtue of treaties among countries. Okay, so they are given uh so, OPU then, okay, offshore banking units uh, are also treated the same. Okay, so there are, uh, there is a trade law amendment to this. So, preferential tax treatment is still 15%. However, if the multinational company is um, registered with the SEC, okay, they shall not be applicable anymore because they are deemed to be registered under the SEC, so they are deemed to be domestic corporations, okay? Um, however, uh, similarly, the qualified employees shall continue to avail the preferential tax rate. So the preferential tax treatment for these corporations are deemed lost because they are deemed domestic corporations, but... As to the individual, no, the employees, individuals employed in these um, special kinds of corporations, they retain the 15% preferential tax rates. Okay, so I hope, class, uh, that, that's the end of my discussion. I hope uh, you're able to at least grasp the basic concept of income tax on individuals. On my next lecture, we will continue on with income tax parino. So that will be the last uh, segment of our semester, income tax on corporation. So please read on advance on the CREATE law. Okay, so this was uh, implemented, um, just put into law actually this year during the pandemic. So to give, um, treat, uh, I mean, to give assistance to corporations who have severely suffered due to the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So the corporate income tax law is still the same, only 
with certain amendments on certain rates and certain treatment of different corporations. Okay, so with that, I thank you for listening and for having reached this part. And uh, I see you on our next live uh, recitation. Okay, so thank you again. So good night.